sort of auto set whenever they hit the button. We're, I think we're rolling, so we're right ahead. All right, call the Finance Committee to order on March 20th um, at 6 p.m. So I'll call, call to order those present. We're present. Um, discussion of the approval of minutes. So moved. Okay. Second. All those in favor? Um, I think the next item on the agenda was, and Larissa, thank you for all the work. Yes. This has gone around and around several times, but what we have, I think, in front of us is all the final comments and drafts and things that we had made. Uh, yep, yeah, uh, the final pieces were put in place uh, last week, and based on what I had received, there's feedback from the three of you, and I think that you should be good to go. <clears throat> Anybody have anything else or comments? No, or? Okay. Just one question. Um, now that we've come to a conclusion, is there any benefit in sending this to uh, Joe Katera, is his name, to see if there's any from a you know S and P and kind of bonding agency review? Since this was well, plus also this was one of our uh, recommendations from the auditors to have this completed. So didn't know if there could be an outside evaluation. If, it's, if there's value and won't cost us anything. Do you want him to evaluate it before we send it to council for approval, or do you want to, do you want us to approve it first and then send it to him? Whatever, whatever the will of the board is, I'm okay if it. This, we move this forward, and if he comes back with something significant, we can always table it. Yeah, I can say we've consulted with him on all the component parts through the okay. years, so I'll be shocked if there's any great substantive yep. change. Um, but I might suggest that you take action tonight. We'll send it to him. Yep. Check in if there's issues. We'll bring it back. If not, we'll go to council. Sure. I, I so. think I think it's good to follow up with them though. We did promise the, the agencies to have it. So if it puts it in his file, so the next time it comes through, we could say, yeah, it's right here or yep. whatever. Then um, the the only other question to uh, the finance director, Ruth. Um, since this was an audit recommendation, do we follow up with them and, and send any additional information to them to say that this was completed? Uh, we can or do, do that. Or do we wait until the next audit? They'll probably ask at the next audit okay. to see where we are with things. So. Okay. Thank you. The next policy we'll undertake is the purchasing policy that is yep. a bit dated, and uh, that's something that we'd like to use this committee if you have some time and attention okay. for it. Uh, we'll take a first cut at it, if, sure. if you don't mind. So and this the next step is to approve this tonight and then bring it to the council for approval, right? Yeah. So, is there a motion? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Great work, Melissa. Thank you. Great. Yeah, thanks for taking us through that. Andrew. <laughs> um, next thing is to kind of talk about just kind of an update on the budget, if there's any new items or anything going on. And then there's a couple items here to talk about, which um, we can weave into the conversation. So maybe start at the top and say, are we still on track? Anything you're aware of? Well, in terms of performance this year, I think uh, we reported our last quarterly, so we're still on track. Uh, you know, the big issues, uh, excise continues to be the juggernaut, is performing, um, meeting expectations, and actually we expect will exceed expectations, which was a, another heightened bar this year from last. So uh, beyond that, as was reported in the Portland Press Herald, uh, no surprise, we've got some winter maintenance challenges this year. Yeah, we sure. kept everything in check but uh, chemicals, but salt. And that's really a function of uh, the frequency and the nature of the storms. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I never ceases to amaze me. I learn something every year. But uh, it was those rain events on frozen ground that create that icing situation mm -hmm. that really caused some serious material usage. But Mike has done a tremendous job of managing his overtime. We're kind of right at budget at this point. Uh, you say right at budget at this point? Yeah, for right. overtime, oh, uh, for kind overtime. of everything yeah. is right at budget, uh, yeah. but for we're double the cost on, on salt. Now, we do have reserves in stock uh, we've, uh, that will carry over into the next year. And that's one of those unpredictable things. But uh, it's certainly a sign of the times. And it's they'd much rather have a foot of snow that's predictable than these uh, very <coughs> questionable events that require constant attention and kind of treating multiple times. Um, so uh, that's the only, it's not even a watch area. It's something that we knew was coming. We've seen it right along through the winter. And Mike has always done his part to bring his overall budget certainly within job. line. Uh, yeah. So I, I fully expect he will. But, but given that, it's sort of the next sort of item C on here about just reserve levels and others. So we've got an upside on excise tax, a downside on salt and chemicals. Mm -hmm. Is that pretty much a wash, or do you expect that we may be... Yeah, uh, yeah. It's sort interesting of. you bring up excise because excise real purpose is to benefit um, roads. Oh. Roads. Yeah, so yeah. it's a, it's a very good example. Yeah, I think that's a fair comparison. I hadn't thought of the two, but I think they will offset each other. Uh, I'm more than that. I'm asking Mike to deal with it on the expense side only, not even considering uh, revenues. Okay. So and and I fully expect he will. He has each and every year. 
Uh, in terms of next year's budget, uh, there's no great surprises. Uh, debt is my biggest challenge in my budget. Uh, we saw about an $800,000 increase. We were able to take advantage of some bond premium to help ease that pain in the first year. Uh, but that's still a $300,000 plus hit to the budget, if you will. I did give directive to my staff to bring in uh, a net budget uh, department by department at 2%, but I still need to deal with that debt piece. And so uh, I'm at this point still working uh, diligently. There's a, a number of new positions that my staff has asked for that we're scrutinizing and it remains to be seen if they'll survive my final red pen. Okay. Those are conversations ongoing and need to be concluded in the next couple of days, frankly. Um, so I, I'm confident at this point that I'll have a net budget cha change 2.5% uh, or less, and I'd like to be much closer to 2. That's my goal. Um, I guess the big piece that is going to, it's not in the operating budget, uh, is the resident, residential reval, which yeah. I think we've all committed to. And I believe and I think there's agreement that we need to fund that through appropriations. So that's going to have an impact an impact on tax rate. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, it's yeah. not. Absolutely. Uh, it's, it's considered in the capital budget at this point, given its nature and size. Uh, but I'm certainly recommending that we fund it through appropriation, yeah. not through any other method. And we're still, that's a 400-ish? We have 415 is the number. Uh, I credit the assessor and the folks downstairs. They're thinking of creative ways to reduce that cost. But for budget purposes, I don't want to count on that. Uh, he's thinking of uh, a number of things. For instance, um, there's a lot of new housing uh, in the last, certainly the last 10 years. And we can speak to that confidently because Sue Russo has personally visited every one. So there's certain properties that we're quite confident in. We've been inside. and. It's all about uh, staff resources. It's labor. It's mm -hmm. it's boots on the ground getting inside every property. So, for instance, if they're not able to make contact and get into property because of whatever reason that's just not convenient for the homeowner, uh, maybe for some of those properties that we have confidence in, we don't have them do follow-ups, and we expect there might be some budget savings. So there's some things that we'd like yeah. to work with a selected contractor when we get to that point. But mm -hmm. for budget purposes, I think we ought to budget uh, with their best estimate, and Larissa's done her best to source out uh, what those numbers are, and unfortunately, it's just about four hundred thousand, a little higher. Yeah. So, so the, from those two things you said, your 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 expenses, you think, other than the debt, will come in at about two percent, but the kicker will be a, a net impact of the debt of three hundred plus the four hundred for the appraisal, right? So that, that's a seven hundred sort of. Yeah, I mean, there's some other CIP items. Again, I've been part of conversations. We're trying to fund as much as we can by appropriation, yeah. uh, consistent with our policies. Yeah. And so there will be some other impact areas, but that's certainly the largest of them. Um, the departments, without my instructions, have really, uh, their CIP requests are, are, are uh, bare bones, I would say, compared to what they've been in the past. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They're really uh, laser focused in terms of what they really think they need to stay on schedule with equipment replacement. And even there, I think they've been, they've relaxed standards a little bit. And projects I think you'll see are decidedly uh, less aggressive. Uh, we have a lot of stuff in, in, in the works with um, Guam Road, Eastern Trail, oh, yeah, uh, right. comprehensive plan. So there's a, we're quickly reaching the point of saturation where uh, we can't, I'm concerned we'll, we need to do a credible job on all these big important things. So taking a little pause and kept not catching a breath, but really focusing on these big important things that are right in front of us, I think is really important over the next uh, year, 18 months. But you just mentioned Eastern Trail. We appropriated that somewhere along the line, didn't we? The yeah, but now it's up to staff to execute. To execute, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I was thinking money. You're thinking no. resources. <laughs> We've got all the resources in hand. That was but appropriated we now like in 2010 or something. Yeah, like yeah. That. And, so it's been but there. now we have to execute, and it's yeah. a big project. It will be the lo the largest locally administered project uh, ever in the state. And wow. we've got the capability of doing it. We, I just want to make sure that I uh, give the staff the time to yeah. be mm -hmm. able to devote to it. So I guess in kind of moving down the agenda, that then the other issue, which I'm sure we may have some spirited conversation on, is how do we want to handle sort of the abatement case and sort of the decision, at least from the board, on where we are. Um, that as it stands, based on the judgment, is about a, with interest, will be about a $400,000 hit. fair. Uh, <clears> hit. <throat> Sorry, no, I'll finish. I'll wait for my talk. Um, 
So I guess the question becomes, I mean, it's so what what do we want to do with that? And it actually kind of flows into the to the next question, which we've been really kind of really trying to carefully monitor our reserves, show a steady and continue increase in those reserves to get to where we want in the policy. If we don't do something to put money into the budget for that and the liability hits next year, then we're going to hit reserves. So the question really becomes in the budget process, how do we want to treat that? And mm -hmm. that's sort of the opening part of the conversation. And I know, Chris, you have strong feelings, but that's, I was just trying to set the stage for I, the conversation. I, so. I bit my tongue. I, I know, I, I know. I'm so deferring to you as chair. Um, so that's sort of the issue on the table. Let me describe yeah. what we've done to date. Uh, the council has approved, and we've actually paid out $463,000. That includes a principal amount in interest. We know now, through subsequent court rulings, that that number is likely to be double or so. Right, just, just, and, and we paid it out using the accumulated <laughs> overlay, right? Yeah, we that's, first swept overlay, because that's, yeah. that's yeah. Ex, uh, express yeah. purpose. Yeah. And then any extra, and I don't know I can't tell you off the top of my head, but it m might have been three quarters of that amount uh, actually came out of fund balance. That's already been shown in the audit that you just saw past last audit. month. Right. So we've seen the effect of that on reserves. The first part. Right. right. But then it's, we used 77 of reserves this year to do the commercial true. audit. So that's that's out there. True. And, and we so expect we'll have some modest contribution to fund balance at the end of this fiscal year, as has been our, our history. Yeah. Um, but your point's well taken. Now, if the council does nothing, the, the same would happen. We would first use overlay to the extent to exhaust it, and then it would hit fund balance. Right, but the tr traditional amount that we put into overlay isn't going to cover right. this, this type of number. No, and, and it's probably worth taking a pause and just talking about the overlay and what purpose it serves. Uh, the overlay, its express purpose is to cover any expected abatements. So we bill taxes if there are errors or in this case, tax appeals that <laughs> are several years old, uh, if we need to rebate or refund taxes paid to us, it's paid for out of the abatement amount. Right. And so the assessor makes a, a judgment as to what do we need based on our tax base and our history to cover those costs. Uh, it's a bit of a guessing game, no two years are alike. Um, and that decision is made at the time just before the tax rate, so it's done at the time of commitment, it's one of the final decisions made, and but it's not in the budget documents, right? I model that, it. I include a number in it. A so number, yeah. And yes. it's been it's been modest. It's been like a penny or a, well, a penny three. produces a lot of tax revenue. Well, for right. Us. But I mean, the, all I'm trying to say is the amount that you've modeled in the past has been relatively modest. Yeah, it, it's always been enough to cover our abatements. So it's always served its purpose, and I can tell you because of the. Uh, over the, the, the concern of tax rate, we have always kept that to the lower than I would like to otherwise. I can tell you many of my colleagues use that as a way of building fund balance, because yeah. if you raise more money than you need to operate, it becomes fund, fund balance uh, ultimately. And the law allows us to carry as much as 5%, which is an ungodly high amount. Yeah. Uh, we would never do that, obviously. But but this is, a, I mean, that's that's there for sort of unknown adjustments that might come up during the year. This, I think this case is just, it's worth a conversation. Mm -hmm. This is a little different. It's its a more of a known about the scope of what the impact might be. Yeah, and I think it's and, fair to say that sometime in FY19 that amount will need to be paid, whatever right. that ends up being. Uh, it seems pretty clear to me now, given the five years that have passed. Yeah. So that really is the question. How do we want to address it during the budget process? Where do we want to reflect it? Where do we want the community to know? And how do we make sure that we're not going to have that impact? And, and again, we have, we've we talked about that sensitivity to reserve levels and what happens to ratings and other things and how it's perceived. Not sure we'll solve that riddle tonight, but that's yep. I, I think that's something for us to think about as we approach the budget. Just to make sure. Um, so, uh, if we can, can you, what is, <clears throat> sorry, I need a little bit more definitive data because when you talk about a penny, people who are watching out there aren't going to sit there and correlate what that value is. What is the total overlay that you typically budget? 
Is it one hundred twenty-five thousand? It's closer to two hundred. Two hundred thousand. Because you say a penny, people are like, "Oh, that's you know," they're they're not going to have any idea what that is. But a penny produces quite a bit. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to make sure, if I understand this, as far as to in order to pay for this settlement, and by the way, this is not a tax refund. This is a a grossly overstated settlement um, for a tax lawsuit. So uh, this is not a refund. I want to make sure that that is clear to everyone. Um, the piece that, there's only three ways to fund this. You either fund it through reserves or a combination of reserves and the overlay, or you fund it fully through an overlay adjustment for next year, mm-hmm. or you bond it. And if you bond it, you have, because of the dollar amount, you have to send it out to the voters. Or I, I right? suppose the, the fourth, and I would suggest before the bonding piece, you could actually include it in your operating budget, which uh, I would not recommend. I, I think it's just such an anomaly that it, um, it really throws you out of whack. For you mean just as a regular purposes. expense? Yeah. Which then you're funding through the tax. So if right. you, yeah, you can exactly. fund it through the tax one way or the other. It's just whether Yeah, it's just say which, which, you know, which egg shell are you, you know, peanut shell are you mm. lifting up to find it. I mean, yeah. let's just stop and think about fund balance. You know, fund balance <clears throat> is created through good budget performance under expenses or bringing in more revenue than you need. Uh, those are the two functions. Um, and in many cases, uh, unspent overlay is a big part of that annual budget right. surplus. Um, it, it would be different if you were using fund balance to pay for street or buy a fire truck, you know, buy, you know, something that there's other arguably better methods of, of acquisition for or planning for. I think the rating agencies would look very unfavorably over that kind of knee-jerk uh, reaction um, because <coughs> we probably could identify how much overlay has flown into the fund balance if you wish to, but I would dare say the majority, or at least half of it, probably is a function of overlay uh, underspent. So to use it for that same purpose, I think you can make a, a, you can justify it. I suspect some agencies will still look um, unfavorably on that because they're interested in maintaining certain levels, regardless of what you're using it for. Um, (coughs) Moody's is the best example of that. They highly, highly value that. So I think it's just a consideration yeah, yeah. for us. And, and the backdrop for me and Chris, I'm sorry, and then backdrop for me, though, is given that we know this and given the current environment in this community, um, I would better, it's something that should be discussed during the budget process, Absolutely. however however we do that. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'll go. <laughs> um, <clears throat> there were a couple statements made that, I, that I'm a little, I, I want to say, I don't want to say concerned about, but I just want to make sure that we're all clear on a few things here. Um, you mentioned that the, 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 the overlay money isn't considered in the budget. I, I, that kind of alluded to me like we didn't know about it and it's a secret account or something, I believe. Uh, does that money show up in the audit report or does it show up in the quarterlies that we see? It doesn't when, show up. Well, it does show up in the quarterlies, but there, it does. it's, you know, it's, it's a buried combined in a bigger money. number. Yeah, because right. we just give a high overview. But that, that uh, number does is... show in the audit okay. uh, as a budgeted item. Mm-hmm. Uh, it never gets shown as being used, per se, because we don't necessarily use it. This right. past year we did because of the tax abatement. Yes. But it is accounted for. It's made public. We, we, we see it in our quarterlies. We see it in our audit statements. Mm-hmm. Okay. And it's on the tax rate comp page, too, as okay. well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's at the bottom. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Another challenge I have is, you know, we're speculating again still. We don't have a full amount for a settlement yet because we haven't reached a settlement yet. And I, I, I'm always cautious, regardless of the reasoning behind budgeting, but to try and make hard copy numbers, or we've talked about this in our, in our policies, to try and make uh, precise and, and finite actions based on unknowns and variables that we're not sure about. So I'm a little hesitant to say it's going to be 400000 We know what this money is, and to put something like that hard number in a budget. I don't think that's responsible. But that's my opinion. The other thing is the sensitivity to reserve levels and the impact it will have on our bond ratings. Um, you know, again, we've talked in, in, in quite a bit about bond ratings, and we've talked about how much it would take for us to move to the next triple A plus rating and uh, what kind of impact that would have and are we willing to sacrifice operational necessities in order to achieve those levels and I don't think that's a, a reasonable or a, uh, a, a, an expectation that we should have. So I don't put fund balance above everything else. I think um, if anything, it's an anomaly. Um, it will be an anomaly, it'll be a settlement. It, it may be sizable. 
Um, and I think we have a procedure in place. We have a mechanism in place that we paid with, we've paid in the past that way. And I personally don't see any way to change that now moving forward. Well, Chris, for me, for two points. One, when I said we don't see it in the budget, what I meant, and let's be clear, at the time that we share the budget with the community, and they're voting on the various budgets, and they're here to give us public comment, the, the actual overlay is determined by the tax assessor after the budget process has closed. So that was my point. So I understand we do see it after the fact. Mm -hmm. But my point here is, do we have an obligation? Should we make sure the public understands what it is? Secondly, on I'm not concerned about going up the next notch in the bond rating. Mm. What I am concerned about is being dinged and going down, especially when we know we have some significant capital projects down the road in a year or two. I mean, if we are looking at a new primary school of a number of 60 million, we want to make sure we have the best interest rates we can get on that. So I'm not worried. I'm not, my concern isn't going up in rating. My concern is that we don't do anything that may downgrade us. And I don't know what the sensitivity is. The only reason that's on the agenda here is I just think it's a question we should try to answer. So two questions for staff. Mm -hmm. um, first one is, um, do we have the ability or the authority to determine through the assessor what that overlay is going to be? Or is that, an, is that a, a interference with <coughs> his or her normal duties? That's a good question. I've never had an elected body be involved in that level of detail, and I believe it's, it, it may be in statute. I can, I can look at it. I'm just okay. speaking from my experience. And, and I think it's because the assessor, it's the number in the assessor's judgment that will be needed in the ensuing year, the following year, to cover tax abatements. Um, in the normal course of things. In the normal course of things. And this, it, this is just what, what's in front of us is we have a case that's been pending for five years. We do have a, you know, the, the arbitration board has come up with a number. Um, but, but, you know, we know what that number is. Um, but that's not the final settlement number, though. Can we agree uh, to that? Well, I mean, you, you just have the town so, manager say it's likely that it's going to be settled next year for some amount. And, and it will impact fund balance if we don't do anything. So that's, that's really the question. Yeah, so uh, let me just finish okay, that thought, sorry. though, please. Um, you know, dinged on fund balance and moving forward for bond ratings, what, and I know it's difficult to predict, um, would uh, hitting the fund balance, which, again, I feel is an appropriate use of fund balance, so that's what it's designed for, if utilizing fund balance in an, an amount, let's say, of $400,000, do, is and I know no one has a crystal ball, but is that uh, cause enough for one rating agency to say you didn't uh, plan for this accordingly, you had to take it out of your reserves, and now we're going to penalize you for that? I can't answer def definitively. I can say it would be reversing a trend that I'm, I'm proud of, which is we built fund balance steadily, small mm -hmm. in small amounts, but steadily over mm -hmm. time, and we've continually received accolades from the rating agencies, including Moody's, and they are the ones that are most keenly interested in fund balance. That's just their methodology. Mm -hmm. And Chris, um, don't forget, and, there's 77,000, too. And yeah. is, there any, is there any reason to believe that um, after all is said and done and the, balance, the, the budget balance out, balances out at the end of the year that we won't be continually contributing to fund balance in some amount, or do you feel like we'll probably be uh, take a hit to fund balance overall and whatever we're sweeping in this year or whatever we contribute next no, year, we'll actually have a, de a, a decrease total, a decrease in fund balance. I, I don't expect our budget performance in FY18 is going to negatively affect. Um, okay. I, I, it's too early to predict how much year in budget for. surplus might be. Mm -hmm. I talked about mm -hmm. a cost overrun in SALT. That's going to be mm -hmm. something that, ha that will show itself mm -hmm. uh, in that number. Mm -hmm. But I don't expect we're going to end with an annual budget deficit and therefore uh, mm -hmm. affect reserves. Right. Really, to your question, I, I'll, I'll read directly from uh, Moody's um, uh, rating this year, just four or five weeks ago. Uh, this is under the heading factors that could lead to a downgrade. And the first one is trend of operating deficits resulting in reserve declines. Now, that, that context of operating deficits is not our situation, but I think the relevant part is reserve declines. We know, there's no secret, that they highly covet fund balance. Uh, I guess the other thing worth noting is that this finance committee and the town council now has raised the bar on itself. 
you've ratcheted up. And I think those things uh, provide for good discussion points with the rating agencies and show commitment. Uh, the sort of policy you're just passing here, it, to my knowledge, is unprecedented to have such a uh, detailed policy and have annual metrics and tying ourselves to uh, looking at these things over time. And they're really important watch areas that are designed exactly around this. I think all of that's going to bode very well for us. That demonstrates a community that gets it, that is paying attention to the things that matter. Yeah, so my, I guess my final thing is, is, is I, I, I'm just very concerned that we make mountains out of molehills in terms of you know, putting the right emphasis on things. It's a one-time expense. It's not a trend in operating budgets. I don't, I don't really think it's reasonable to expect that a one-time hit to our reserve account, even if it, it even if it, it, whatever value we're talking about to 200 to 500,000 is going to result in us being dinged in a bond rating. So I'm just curious or concerned when we, when we put statements like that out that um, it, it creates a little bit of anxiety which I'm not quite sure is, is warranted at this point. So I'll end my comment with that. So you both bring up, um, all three of you actually bring up a lot of points um, that make this interesting. First is I think that um, there's a cause of, as far as the statement from, what was it, S&P? Was that S&P? Moody's. Moody's. And I have the, these if you. Yeah, I, I know I've got it at home, but um, there's a cause and effect that they look at, they're not going to sit there and automatically downgrade you just because your reserve balance goes down. Right. If it's a result of operating deficits, then probably it could happen. However, what they're going to ask as part of that bond call is, what is your course of action in, as a result of that? And if it's reasonable, they would probably hold you where you are with a warning or there's two different watch. Yeah. So they're going to look at both of those. Mm -hmm. And I think that through the explanation and full disclosure about why we had to hit our fund balance or whatever the effect is on the um, on the operating statement, whether it is through an expense or whether it's a, a fund, it, does, it all has the same effect to the citizens. You have to be able to explain that. And I think the full disclosure of that will allow not only the analysts right. to see what we're doing and why we're doing it, but also the citizens. So I think that we do need to be clear, fully support making sure that citizens understand what that overlay is, how it's used, why it's used, and then also full disclosure about this entire thing regarding the tax appeal, the who, what, where, when, and why, where, where we are when this comes down to making a decision. And I do think that if we don't know when this is going to be final or what that final amount is, we have to be reasonable and have a fiduciary responsibility to plan for some action this year. Might not be the whole amount, but some amount. And I would trust the manager's recommendation and the finance director's recommendation on where that should be because we don't know where it's going to be. We know what we've offered. We don't know where it's going to be. So I would kind of rely on that relationship between the three of us at least to get started with the two of them, mm -hmm. three of them, um, to make that kind of recommendation. Um, the other piece I wanted to make um, sure was that um, you know, as far as the overlay, I don't recall us ever focusing on this in the years I've been around. No. But to me, even if it is, whether it's statutorily required or whether it's just a practice, if it's just a practice, I'd like to understand the policy around the calculation and maybe we should have that in our own policy to understand it okay. going forward. But if it is statutorily required for the assessor to do that, it's no different than the current valuation process. We get an estimate as part of our budget process and we're not, we're not getting actual numbers until after the fact. So the fact that the manager at least includes the overlay, however it is calculated, into the budget process, um, I'm comfortable with the way we've always done that. Guarantee we can focus on that as part of our conversation. That doesn't hurt. Um, I just, I'm not surprised by this, and I don't think it's as big as it may sound like it needs to be. Just if I could respond with two things. One is, um, with respect to these, the potential liability associated with this lawsuit, we have disclosed that each and every time through our official statement yeah. since it's been a an open issue, um, and I'm pleased and to provide that to you. And, and those are conversations yep. we've had with the bond agencies. You know, mm -hmm. what is this liability, mm -hmm. uh, and, and how do you intend to, to deal with it? So, we've been incredibly upfront and disclosed that each and every time. Um, and, and just a, my my disclosure piece, because I know that we've been very good at, with the parties. They're not focusing on the details, which I think the constituents want to know about. Um, they want to know why we're you know, paying out this amount and all the other pieces that go into that. But how, however, if one of the concerns is that by not budgeting for this or not addressing this, that it's going to negatively impact our bond rating, I think the, 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 the position you. and the yeah. mood of the bond or the, 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 the implication of the bond rating agencies is critical. Yep. I will research the statutory aspects of, yeah. of this. Um, I will say that, that there's a handful of other things that are affected <coughs> by the assessor. Uh, they're kind of below the line, so to speak. Once you adopt your budget, and the school budget is adopted, 
uh, then the assessor knows how much needs to be raised. The only decisions made at that point will be what is the value, which is the lion's share of their work. Uh, but the things below the line are things like credit enhancement agreement and TIFs. Those are all in part based on what is, the, what is the tax rate. So those numbers will change slightly. We carry a number in the budget right out of the gate, but they are adjusted when the tax rate's set. And the other one is the overlay. And if I knew from the council that you wish to provide for appropriate monies through the tax rate, um, I will relay that message to the assessor. And so to the extent that we have clarity, that we know we're gonna pay it out in this fiscal year, and ideally we even know what that amount is, that will be taken into account. And at most, I guarantee you, it would affect the tax rate a penny. Um, I don't mean to suggest that that's not important, but just to put in order of magnitude, a penny makes, I wish I'd going to do the math. Yeah, it's something like a million dollars. So I mean, it's, it's, and it may not even be that much, frankly. Um, we can't do but fractions. But your, your point's still relevant. We can't do fractions of a penny. So, um, <laughs> but at most, it would, it would affect the tax rate in that order of magnitude. So you made a suggestion, Sean, or, or not make a suggestion. Should it be a policy? Should we, should I, th I think the manager needs to come back and tell us if it's a, if it, if it is a uh, statutory statutorily requirement, statutory requirement of the assessor, then it's mute. Um, except for I would like to know what the formula is or how, you know, what does the statute say mm -hmm. on how that should be calculated. Um, and then if it's not a statute and it's policy, I'd like to understand what that policy is and, yeah, and I'm, I'm if sure it should be included in our own policy. I'm sure I'm telling secrets out of school, but I know managers and communities have adopted a culture whereby they build fund balance by yeah. raising more through overlay than they will ever need to satisfy abatements in the, com in the next year. And that's not a culture or practice that's ever been experienced here. Mm -hmm. And that's probably one of the reasons that we have a fund balance at the lower end, to be honest. Could you, when you come back, could you just do one thing, could you just take the last five years and just compare what you put in the budget documents we see as your yeah. overlay versus what ended up sure. being the actual overlay built into yep. the final tax rate? Yeah, I think it's, you'll find it to be pretty well, that's great, But it just it would yep. be informative, I think, to that conversation. So budget projection to actual. Yeah. Oh, and I did want to mention, as far as um, as far as the concern about going up or down, I thought they were pretty clear. I don't remember which one. Mm -hmm. The agency said it's a pretty it's a pretty long, maybe it was just Joe. It's a pretty long distance between where we are and moving mm -hmm. up. Um, and a, yeah. the big part of that was primarily because of fund balance, right. if I remember right, as well as debt. Um, but the second piece is that um, we're probably not too far. We're probably uh, the gap between where we are and going down might be lower. But I remember I think it was 2010 or 11. We um, we used like all like a huge amount of fund balance that took us below policy, and we did not go down in rating because we were able to explain why in the course of action, and it benefited us to at least get a hold. Yeah. I believe that was in 2009. It was when everyone yeah. realized we were in a different place, and the council consciously yeah. uh, used a significant fund balance, dipping below its stated policy. And that was also the year that the school had a number of cuts, uh, 20 Well, it was the first year in which we had um, the, the funding formula from the school also started going down. Yeah, and it was the first that time everyone realized we were in a different place financially. 2008, we yeah. saw it, something it's was happening, but nine, everyone knew. And Sean, I think from your financial and banking background, you're the one that was really pounding your fist saying, this is serious, guys. We need to take some pretty serious measures right now. I do remember that. So I'll do that research. Be yep. Pleased to provide yep. that five-year analysis. I think you'll see that those numbers are That's good. pretty close. And personally, whether it's um, through the overlay, personally, I think that we should plan either the whether it's four hundred thousand or if it's another million dollars, it needs to be put into this year's budget. And if it's in the tax base, it's in the tax base, and we have to explain that. I will relay that sentiment to the assessor. I don't know about the other two, but that is, it, too. it needs to be in there. I, I don't, if you want to vote on it, we can vote on it, but I don't. I don't think no. that's an appropriate action. But that's all right. So it's not. It's not. It doesn't require a vote. I think it's just guidance at this yeah. point. I hear it loud and clear. Yeah. Um, I was just going to say, Larissa has something from Moody's that talks about the, the components of what makes up their decision portions <coughs> of it, and one of those has to do with governance and management, and you know how do we follow our policies, and mm -hmm. you know do we create a policy and then just ignore it, or do we actually follow it? And, you know. Yeah, we'll share this out. Larissa just found it. It's about six weeks old. It's their new methodology on mm -hmm. 
Um, That's great. And it assigns a percentage to the different aspects, management and financial condition and economy outlook, all of those sorts of things. We'll share it, and that's that's the standard that we held, will be held against going forward. Right. And just very quickly, just if you can kind of rest a little easy knowing <laughs> that 30 percent of, of what Moody's is now scoring communities on is on that governance piece that Ruth was just talking about. What, say that again? 30% 30 30 of the bond rating is, is, is based, based on, on governance. How, us. Yep. <laughs> and 20% of it is based on external forces, just the, the general yeah. um, economic community, um, uh, the economic vital vitality of the greater community. And from what I can figure out, using their ratios, only, um, at most, 17.5% is connected to um, what they call financial flexibility and or liquidity. And I think that that's where you're seeing mm. fund balance discussed. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, just to kind of, if it, if it helps everyone kind of breathe a little easier, knowing that really the work that you guys have done the last few years of really showing up those policies and, and following them and having them be consistent um, is serving your bond rating really well. And just a, a final point on that, if I could, S&P, which is the other rating agency we look to, these, and I'll state them in order that they present them in terms of what they, I'm not attributing any percentage, but uh, they say uh, economy, and ours is very strong, uh, management, and they characterize as our, ours as strong, adequate budget performance, uh, budget flexibility, liquidity, and then debt to contingent liability profile. Those, from their perspective and their methodology, those are the things that uh, matter to them. Is that order of precedence or order of priority, or is I, that just I can't anyone? say that. Okay. I'm just reading as they appear. Yeah. What was the last one? Debt to what? Contingent? It's called debt and contingent liability profile. Huh. We, was that one of the metrics? It says, in our view, Scarborough's debt and contingent liability mix. profile is strong. Hmm. We have that great quote from... Um, I can't remember if it was Moody's or, or S&P, but the agent, remember, we wrote it down. From where I stand, town of Scarborough does not have a debt pro problem. <laughs> like, right. we wrote it down and put the date. That's right. At a subsequent meeting talk, hmm. could we, could we uh, as a different agenda item at some point, try to figure out that last bullet, what, 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 what that tenants means? go into that? Sure. Yeah, we can drill down. What is, it, what is it specifically they're looking for as indicators in that last? That's the debt and contingent liability. All right, anybody, I guess with that, um, everybody okay on those items? Yes. Thank you for that guidance. Um, then we've got the future meeting dates is April 4th, which is, Tom, I, I, there's so many dates now, is that before or after the unveiling of the budget? That is the budget, budget presentation. Yeah, that, is that is the budget. budget. Okay, that's budget presentation. Right okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Don't remind so, me. Yeah, yeah, it's not that far away. No. All right, with that, anybody else got anything? Yeah, um, so Tuesday, April 10th, um, I regret I cannot, absolutely cannot make it. I'm negotiating or uh, facilitating a, uh, um, a transaction the May Medical Center is trying to buy a building that uh, for a nonprofit that I belong to, and I've got to be at the meetings on the 9th and 10th. So, okay. I'll work with Colette. Uh, I don't know if there's, I mean, I'm available Thursday, um, Tuesday I can't, Monday I, I can, I'll work around whatever I have to for you guys. I just cannot be here for the 10th. Okay. And just remember, this year, at the request of some residents, and I think councilors agreed, we are separating the presentation of the budget uh, from first reading. So first reading will actually be on the 11th, Wednesday 11th. It's a single item agenda dedicated to that. We're also kicking around the idea of doing a TIF 101 that evening. That seems to be the date that's going to work for most. What, what time is that, um, uh, the meeting? The six? meeting would be at 7. Was seven, the okay. Schedule start and, and then uh, before that Councilor Donovan and I or Chairman Donovan and I are talking about we really want to get in front of you and do a fundamental uh, TIF workshop before we have anything in front of us and are thinking that might be the best date to try to choose just so we can have that and have, have some time before anything formal comes forward. Is it possible that a TIF would have any impact on next year's budget and how are we going to? I don't do believe so. That? Tips are based on value that doesn't exist. So, um, yeah. Future value. Weren't they, weren't they pretty aggressive at doing something next year? Yeah, I think we'll see their first development pod or pad, whatever you call it, uh, probably in late spring, early summer coming to the planning board. So, uh, so wouldn't that be probably value? have approvals by fall. No, so, I mean, that's just an opening a question. Yep. If, 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 if we move down that pathway and there is a TIF, how do we? there will be value next year, it sounds like. Yeah, I mean, uh, Scarborough Downs is, uh, 
kind of a unique unto itself. Um, I think we can look at history and have an appreciation for what we could sh should reasonably expect in terms of valuation growth. To me, Scarborough Downs is uh, kind of sits on top of that or besides that. Uh, I think that has the potential of really ratcheting up our performance in that regard, but that remains to be seen. Um, our economy continues to, to be moving very well and the development is flourishing. So I, I think all those trends continue and this is just kind of on top of that in my opinion. And I guess with that, anything else, anybody? No. With that, the last item is public comment. Anybody have anything this evening? With that, then I guess. Move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? All right. Thank you all. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I guess we should, let's just share it electronically. Okay. I can't. Is it um, the last? So it's 48 minutes. Oh. The last 24.